Hey guys, I'm back today to do another breakdown uh, from Quintet Fight Night 2, uh, my match versus uh, Hideki Shrek Sekine. So uh, let's just get started here. However, David Garbo is very used to fighting bigger and heavier guys. Only in training and in competition, he actively seeks out. So uh, this was our first team match against uh, Team Soldier, where uh, Shrek was the uh, captain of the team. He was also, I think, around 275 pounds uh, when he walked up to the mat. I think I was around 180 uh, at that point. Um, now, I really wanted this match because I like, you know, as you guys know, if you guys know me at all, I really like going against the bigger guys, especially on a big stage like this. Um, and... Uh, I knew that he was a pro wrestler, so he knew how to throw people, so I decided I wanted to double leg him, and uh, that destroyed my neck. Um, and then he has these double overs. I want to show you guys this again, because this was uh, this is what happens when you go against bigger guys sometimes. Sometimes it just doesn't work out that well, and you take some damage. Okay, so here we are right after that double leg, and then, okay. So, it's gonna be hard to see with this play button here, but if you notice, I've got um, a really bad version of double underhooks here, okay? And Shrek is really, really wide. So, my elbows were further in than my hands, uh, because my hands couldn't come in any further, right? If I'm here, I'm safe because then this happens. But if I'm here, my elbows come in, my arms stay out, you know, then you can start doing some damage uh, to the interior part of your elbow, okay? So what does he do? He decides to lock his hands up and attempt to just not throw me with my body. He threw my elbows, which both popped on the way up and over. And that's why I landed some weird way, because he didn't throw my body, he threw my elbows. And then, you know, that upper body throw. I was able to stay on top here. Uh, I don't even know, I'm not really sure how. I think I was just over past him. And then I transitioned to this guillotine. Now, uh, just the way that this man is shaped, he made it really difficult for me to keep that guillotine grip. Um, and he just basically pushed my hips away, which I hadn't really experienced before. Um, because that was like, I had a pretty decent lock on his chin, um, but he was just like, boom, push me away. Um, now, I wasn't necessarily worried about him submitting me. Um, you know, he's a really big guy, unless he was able to isolate one of my arms, which I'm pretty good at uh, avoiding. I didn't expect too much from there, but I knew it was going to be really hard to isolate one of his limbs. And so I really wanted to go for some chokes here, and there he goes, he throws me again. Um, so, you know, working for those front headlocks, I feel like he kind of knew what I was going for. And so I transitioned to something else. Now I'm in a pretty, pretty good position, top half guard. And I'm, you know, working for this knee slice. I uh, go on a quarter mount here. Now, this was uh, purely an ego thing. Um, I can say that um, now because the match has been over for a while, but like I really wanted to just, you know, either break his arm or make him submit that gigantic arm of his. And I really felt I could. Um, and I still think I can, but it's probably not the best strategy when you only have four minutes um, to compete against somebody. And during this entire time, I'm working this out, but if you can see. His thighs are just literally smashing my lower shin and ankle together. I couldn't pull that out if I had the jaws of life. And I was really working it. I was trying to go against his elbow here, trying to fight those hands. I eventually tried to come up here. Yeah, see how I post here? Try to sit up. But because my leg is on in between his legs, didn't really have a great position. Um, you know, we end up, I end up on the bottom here. And at this point, yeah, we're only three minutes in, but I had redlined myself to the point where I am 
absolutely fried, exhausted. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a double leg attempt. Uh, didn't didn't work. Had a pretty decent angle on it, but I just I, I didn't have that extra little bit. It throws me again. I loop underneath. Um, so like throughout this match, you'll see. Um, between my one takedown and his, you know, several, we neither of us controlled anything on the way down, which is not not good grappling, right? Like, you know, he threw me a bunch of times, uh, I just pop right back up, or I slide into a different position, uh, to the top position, and then when I double legged him, you know, bounce, stand back up. So there's a lot of like exciting things that happen in this match, and then here I go for an ankle lock that. You know, nobody was really worried about it. Didn't have a very good angle. wasn't a good position. That foot was gigantic. But there's so little time left that I had to attempt something, hoping that <laughs> I don't know. He freaked out. Um, but I have, like, in my the latter half of my career, I have not been so tired after a match. And this was only four minutes. So sometimes you get these really good matches where you're able to submit a big guy quickly and. Uh, you know, great. You know, you're, you're you're the hero, and then sometimes you you leave these matches just beat up, and uh, that's what happened in this match. I just was, you know, my body was a mess. Uh, my neck was jacked up. Both my elbows were jacked up. I couldn't couldn't close my fingers because my arms were so pumped up. Um, but this wasn't necessarily uh, about me. This was about the team, and so. You know, I went out there trying to submit him, um, doing my best to do that so we could have a, more of an advantage. Um, we ended up winning this uh, team match and then eventually winning uh, in the championship round as well, which was fantastic. You know, we had a, you know, uh, the rest of the guys in the Carpe Diem team did really, really well, did everything they had to do uh, for us to take the wins. Um, and I would always compete under these, this rule set because I think it's the it's one of the funnest, especially me coming from a wrestling background, uh, relying on teammates um, to win their prospective matches or to do a very specific set of things uh, to set up the next matches um, you know and that I love that added extra element um, to uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and, and, and grappling um, so I hope they continue to do these especially after all this quarantine is over but if you guys want to see any of the matches please let me know um, I want to I want to break down some more stuff and and if you guys have matches of your own that you guys want to send to me um, shoot me a message, I'll send you my email address and then we could exchange it that way and I could do a breakdown.